hello and welcome to another exciting tutorials today we are going to learn how to model a can add some materials and lighting and then animate it right inside of blender from scratch so let's get blending so first of all let's open up our blender and then let's hit general to start with a fresh new file Let's select everything and hit X to delete, right? We are going to start everything from scratch. So what we want to do first is to go to our scene properties, go to unit and then change it from meters to centimeters, right? We want to work in the right proportion as much as we can. So next we have to go to our viewport layout and then change the scale to 0.05. Okay, so this makes it smaller. So that we can zoom in even further to work in smaller sizes right so the units is changed to centimeters and then we change our scale to 0.05 so next let's add in our can so we add in a cylinder so we do shift a and then we go to cylinder and then we add in a cylinder let's zoom in a bit so that we can see our cylinder let's pop out the cylinder options and then as you can see we have our radius set to five let's do something like six and then let's increase our depth a bit now let's change the vertices from 36 to 16 right i think 36 is too much so we can hit on okay and then we can even have fill we can go with nothing because we are going to fill it in later so that we don't have anything filling the top and the bottom of our can next let's go to the right orthographic view so let's look at its head on so to do that you can hold your alt and then use your middle mouse just to nudge in the direction you want so you have our right orthographic view here or you can come and just hit on this x here then you will still get your right orthographic view so i have my screencast turned on so you can see everything i press here in this corner so that you, you can just follow along with the shortcuts so next what we want to do is to bring in our reference image so i'm going to leave everything everything in this project file in the link below so you can grab it and then you'll be able to follow along so let's do shift a and then let's import in our image as reference so import in our image as reference locate where you downloaded your project files and then we are going to um, import this can reference so we can double click to import it inside our our project as you see it's been imported but then it's very big so let's do s for scale and then let's scale it down until we have something like this so we are scaling it down till all it fits properly with our can we we inserted earlier on so next with our image reference selected let's add in some few options here so you go to depth and then we bring it to front so that we always it's always seen and then we untick the perspective view so that when we go into our perspective view it's not distracting us right it's only visible in our orthographic view next we add in some transparency and opacity so we decrease it so that we see so that we see the shape that is inside we see everything that is inside next we have to lock it in place so we just come here restriction toggles and then we hit on this so that we will not be able to select and move it so now let's select our cylinder and then we hit start to jump into edit mode and then we go to our, our edge select mode we select this edge so we hold we hold alt and then we click on one of these edges to select the entire ring around we go back into our face our front view then we can do g to move it down on the z axis so you do you hit g and then you hit z on your keyboard just to move it down and constrain it on the z axis so we bring it somewhere here and then we do e for extrude and then we hit on z and then we bring it down to somewhere here we can do s to scale it down like this then we do another one extrusion e then we bring it down like this right so this is what we have then next all we have to do is to do e to extrude and then s and then we scale it in 
our extrusion so i think it's a bit bigger so we scale our extrusion in like this and then we do e and then we extrude it inside on the z axis by holding on z so we'll bring it up somewhere here and we do s to scale it down we do e once again and then s then maybe we bring it down on the z axis like this then we do e one more time s to scale it down then maybe we bring it up like, sorry we bring it up down on the z axis like this and then we go to our our faces and then we do a great fill to fill this hole up like this so we are done with the button let's quickly jump to the top so we select our the entire um, edges on on top and then we can do e to extrude it no let's not extrude so undo one more time let's select everything and then let's do g to bring it up to somewhere here then we do e to extrude to here and then we can scale it down like this okay so we do e once again to add an extrusion then we do s to scale it out like this and then next we can sorry we can select this ring entire ring and then it's all extrusion so i'm just extrude e z then extrude it up like this you can always look at your reference to make sure it's it's it's, it's matching as precise as it can the next we do e s you know the drill by now so it's just extrusion then we can extrude one more time and bring it down like this so we are done with our can basically what we have to do is let's throw it inside the subdivision surface so we go to our modify stop and then we do add modifier and then we do subdivision surface right we jump into edit mode once again let's just write let's jump out of edit mode right click and then we do a straight smooth okay so let's hit tab to go into edit mode once again and then let's add in a couple of loop cuts just to tighten up our form okay so we do Control r for add loop cut then we scroll our mouse wheel up just to add in some cuts so i think this is enough just to tighten up our form so we come here let's add another support loop here then we do s to scale it up a bit maybe it's too much then we can add the support loop here just to tighten up this form so as you can see the form is a bit tightened up let's go here to this side and then we do control r once again then we bring in our loop cut here then let's add in another one in the middle and then we can scale it up like this so let's add in another one just right here so let's bring it down to somewhere here okay next we can add an extra loop cut in the middle and then we do ctrl b to bevel it so that we create two loop cuts which are equidistant from each other at the top and then at the bottom so we're done with our can model we can add even more loop cuts here just to straighten up our form if you want just do ctrl r and then maybe we add in a loop cut here and there just to tighten up our form but i'm happy with the model i have you can take your time to think around and do a lot of cool other stuff so next what we have to do is rename this cylinder into can so we do a can body and then next we will have to model the top part obviously so before we go ahead let's just do control s control s to save our, mo our model so we go to our project files and then we name it as can and we hit on save to save our model so next let's model the top part of our can to do that we are going to add in another reference image so let's go to the top view like this then we do a shift a we add in an image reference and then we're going to select this can top here so let's just load it in we hit s and then we scale it down like this let's zoom in and then let's we can do g to position our can the way we want it 
so after we are done positioning our can we can rotate it down like this so let's rotate it 45 degrees to 45 for the rotation and maybe let's position it even um, better like this okay so next let's go to our image reference on take perspective check the front and then go to opacity and then let's decrease our opacity like this so we can see um what is beneath it so next let's hide our can for a second we are going to come back to it later and then let's add in a circle so we do shift a then we go to circle to add in a circle let's make sure we have the vertices set to 16 and then we can continue with our modeling so now with our circle selected let's just check here so that we don't accidentally move our empty so now with our circle selected let's tap into edit mode and then let's go top again and then we can make sure we have our edge select mode active and let's do e to extrude and then we hold we hit s to scale it down like this okay and then we can do e once again to add in an extrusion then we do s to scale it down so we have something like this okay so next we can change it to our point select mode and then let's select everything on this side and then we can do z and then we can delete all the vertices so that we have just one half right and then we will mirror it to the other half later so now let's continue with our modeling so we can just add in the mirror or we can do that later anyhow we want it so let's make sure we have our point select mode active let's select each point hold g and then position it in place we are just trying to follow along this line so let's just go once you have what the the kind of shape you want and obviously take your time to make sure it's perfectly aligned as you want it so once you have the shape you want we go to our modifiers and then we hit on we hit on mirror to mirror it on the y axis and then we we'll take on the x just to hide the x axis so we want only the y axis let's jump into edit mode go to object mode or we hit tab to jump into an object mode and then we can apply our mirror so we have our mirror applied now let's go back into edit mode and then hit on two and then we we hold alt click to select everything around like this then we are extrude it down on the z axis something like this it's fine we can do g to bring it down even more if we want so next let's extrude and then s to scale it in like this right and then we can do one extrusion s to scale it in no so let's extrude with s to scale it in like this and then let's fill it in with a grid fill so we do grid fill and let's play around with our span so let's just hit two to find something better we can work with we can play around with the offset as well so this is fine for me so now so two span and then minus one offset so we can go to our top view once again and then let's make sure we have our point select mode active let's select each point and then try as um, much as possible to align it oh so we have double points here as you can see so i think we did some um, extrusion now we didn't um, i did some extrusion i didn't align so i will do um control g like back like this and then i'll select everything so in case you have a problem like this i think i did an extrusion 
but then i didn't uh, move the point so it means we have double points at each position we had so we just hit on m and then we merge by distance right so you see i've removed 16 vertices so now if i select this point i can easily move it and then it's just one point so let's just move each of the points so they are fitting with this line as we as perfectly as we can okay so let's just move everything so that we have something like this going on so let's select or what we could have done is let's just go back a bit right let's just select all these faces so let's go to let's go to our front view then we do go make sure we have our face select mode active click and then select all these faces and then we can do i to insert it in like this right we can just do g to move it up like this and then let's bring this down so we do g and then z to push it down like this so that we have this shape going on for us so now let's add in a subdivision surface to see what we have we can increase the levels to two if we want right click and then we do a shade smooth so this is what we have now we can obviously add in some some um, edge loops in the side just to, to tighten up the loops but i think this is fine for now so now let's model this opener here so we are going to start that with a plane so let's do a shift a and then add in a plane object right so with the plane added <coughs> let's decrease it a bit so that we it's very small and tiny and then let's just zoom in and then let's tap into edit mode by hitting tab or going here and then selecting edit mode now let's just position our plane in place so we do g and then we position it somewhere here let me just do s to scale it down even a bit more so now let's make sure we have our edge select mode active and then let's select this edge here and then let's extrude so we are going to extrude this edge all along this path here and then we do the same across the whole the whole um the whole object so let's do e to extrude and then we do r to rotate it like this then maybe we can scale it in a bit then we can or oh, maybe scale it out then we can do e r so we are done with our extrusion and then we extrude and then maybe we move it in place so we are done right so extrude one more time so let's say this will be the final extrusion we we'll do r and g then we we'll move it in place like this okay we're going to mirror it on the other side after we are done so let's just extrude one more time bring it somewhere here and let's scale it up then, like this then we extrude so it's just a couple of extrusion and then scaling rotating and other stuff r to rotate and let me bring it back like this and then maybe i can scale it up so just do a couple of extrusion to you've covered all this entire object so let me extrude one then i'll do e to extrude and then i'll rotate here let me just rotate one here then we can add in another cut here by doing ctrl r to add in a loop cut and then g and we can move it in place like this right so let's just add in another one here then we can do g just to move it in place so now after we are done with this basic one we can just select go to our point select mode and then just place the points in place to make sure everything is properly um, placed like this so next what we have to do is select these entire points and then extrude them down so let's make sure we have our edge select mode active S click and then select all these four so four points here 
and we can do E and then extrude and bring them down here okay so next let's just select each point and then do G and then position it on around this this edge here right so let's delete we don't need this point so let's just select these two x and then we delete edges to delete those edges and then maybe we can position this one here like this so that we have something like this um, to work with okay so let's add in a loop cut in the middle like this and then we are basically done with our ship let's just finish up here so i'll go to my edge select mode once again select this edge and then i'll do e to extrude it down do s to scale it down like this and let's place it somewhere here and let's add in another extrusion s to scale it down then g and the last one let's add in last extra extrusion s to scale it down and then let's position it somewhere here so we do the same thing we did for here let's go to our point select mode and then let's just notch this point in place so we do g just to bring it in place sorry just to g just to position the points well sorry i i intentionally hit f so we do g just to position the points well then we can do ctrl r to add in a loop cut right in the middle all right so let's see what we have so as you can see let me just select everything and hit on the slash key to isolate it so we have this kind of shape going on for us next let's add in a mirror modifier yeah, so that we flip it. so let's go to our modifiers tab and then we search for our mirror modifier we are going to mirror it on the y axis so let's hide the z axis for now so we have something like this so as you can see some of the points are crossing over to the other side so we have to um, notch the points back a bit so that they all join nicely so to do that we just have to turn on clipping and then let's go to our top view like this and then let's tap into edit mode so as you can see this point is just crossing over to this side so we can select this side and then do g so it snaps so it's going to snap automatically where the, the two points meet because we have the clipping turned on let's just do g and then do the same thing for the rest of the points so we have perfectly snapped points so we can move this down a bit like this so we are okay with our shape let's just apply our mirror and then we can go back into edit mode select everything and then do e to extrude it down like this so that we had we add a little bit of thickness to it so next let's just pop it into our subdivision surface to smooth in it out so we can just do shade smooth to smooth in our shape out we can add in an extra loop cut in the middle just to hold the form a little bit small right let me just hit my slash to bring back everything and then finally let's just add in a, a cylinder a small cylinder here just to hold these two shapes together so let's do sc and then we can make it small so let's do ctrl a and then let's apply all our transform okay since we are going to add in a bevel so let me just tab into edit mode alt click to select this entire ring and then i'll do ctrl b to add in a bevel scroll my mouse wheel up to add in a few loop cuts here and there so right click and then we do a shade smooth to smoothen it out let's do a ctrl s just to save make sure we have our files saved right so now we are done with the top part let's move ahead So now we are done with the top part so what's next we are going to add in our materials and then add in some lighting and then we continue with our animation so let's just do a little bit of cleaning out here so let's this is the lid 
let's just rename it to lid and then let's select everything shift click to make sure we have our lid as the last object selected then we do ctrl p and then we parent everything to the lid so now if we move the lid everything is going to move along with it let's bring back our can body like this and then let's do g z and then let's bring our lid up to this side and just bring it in so so we have our lid back inside like this very nice and simple we can bring it down we can bring it down a bit like this yeah so everything is done next let's do our uv1 wrapping and then add on our materials so now everything is ready let's quickly review unwrap this object here so let's select everything then hit tab to go into edit mode let's make sure we are selecting this line we are, so we are first we are going to select this entire line and then we mark it as seam okay this is where we want to cut and then unwrap or unfold our our can so that we can place our material on top so let's select this line here then go top to this side we hold control to and click to select this entire path here so we right click and then we go to mark seam so that we mark it as seam next let's select this entire ring that goes across so we hold alt and then we click on it to select the entire ring then right click we add another seam here and then we do the same thing at the top at the top here so let's hold alt click to select this entire ring right click and then we do a max seam to select this entire seam as well so next what we have to do is um we jump into so before we continue let's add in some materials here and there so let's bring this up here and then we change this from geometry nodes we change it from timeline to the shader editor right so first so next let's add in some materials before we continue so on top out of edit mode make sure i have my hand selected then i'm going to click on new materials so make sure you have this set to shader editor then we're going to create our new material let's rename it to silver and then let's zoom in into our psdf shader like this right and then let's make it metallic let's make sure it's pure white this and let's decrease the roughness to something like this all right so now we have our material but then we can't see so next let's let's add in um let's create another window here and then let's add in a camera to our scene so we do a shift a and then we go to camera and we'll click on camera to add in a new camera to our scene so as you can see our camera is way here this side so in this tab let's hit on this camera view so that we can look into our camera let's scroll our view to position it in place and then let's hit n let's go to our view and then let's lock camera to view and then let's hit n once again to hide that menu now we can scroll down back and then position our camera in view now let's go to this side and then let's select this viewport shading to make sure we have that shading on so this is what the silver material we created this is how it looks like for now now with this selected let's tap into edit mode once again make sure we have our face select mode active let's select one face and then let's hit l to select the entire place we marked as seam so as you can see this entire place is selected but then this top part and then this this top part and then the bottom part are omitted from our selection so next let's add in another material just for that portion so let's let's hit on our materials properties and then let's hit on the plus to add in a new material right so with when we hit on the plus we just have to hit on the new to create a new material let's just change the base color here 
to something like red we'll come back to it later now let's hit one assign to assign the material so now if we jump out of edit mode you can see we have two separate materials for for our can label we have one at the bottom and then one one at the middle and then one at the bottom so this red part is where we are going to apply our our label so let's rename this to label and then let's continue with our journey so next let's bring in our label so let's make sure we have the label material selected which is this one and then let's check to make sure we have our node wrangler active so we go to edit and then preference and then we go to add-ons and then we search for node and the node wrangler and then we make sure we have it checked as well next with our node wrangler active let's select this principle bzsdf and then we hit on ctrl c to add in an image texture which is mapped to the uv next let's open up this image texture and then let's import this label content that comes along with the project for us inside the description so let's double click to add in our label content right so next um, let's jump let's move from our layout tab to uv editing tab so that we have our uv right so let's right click let's hit on u and then do unwrap to unwrap our uv so as you can see it's not it's not unwrapping um, properly so let's come here to this side and then let's try and straighten up this uv so that it unwraps properly along our can so to do that first we have to hit r and then rotate it 90 degrees like this and then as you can see it's still having some pinching at the top and some other weird issues so let's do g and then let's make sure we have bring it to the center like this and then let's try and straighten this up okay so to straighten it up we are going to use a, uh, an add-on called uv spheres so i'm going to leave a link to grab the uv spheres in the description below so to install this add-on we have to just go to our edit preference and then we go install so when you hit on install you locate where you downloaded your add-on just double click on it and then it's going to be installed inside your blender so next you just have to make sure it's checked on and then you have it here on this side so let's select everything and then we are going to hit to grid by shape so it's going to create a grid based on the shape of this image we added so let's just say to grid by shape then it's going to create this shape for us so it's uh, straightened everything for us next what we have to do is to scale it up so we do s then we scale it up and let's just do g we are just trying to position it as much as we can in the, the entire thing so then we scale it on the x axis like this so we stretch and then scale it on the y axis and the x axis until the entire um, label is occupied so now let's look at our label and this is what we have for now right so we have the main base color so now let's go back into our layout tab let's zoom in so that we can see our material so this the material with the label let's make it metallic again and then let's decrease the roughness like this so that we have a smooth and um, metallic material right so next let's add in the name of our label okay let's let me just go to the style we are going to add in a name here that's the name of our label on this side right so I'm just trying to position my camera in place properly okay so we are going to add in a name here so to do that let me just go back here we are going to have to duplicate 
this image so we are going to add an extra image texture and then so we have to duplicate this image texture so we we'll select this theory and then we we'll do shift d to create a duplicate here and then we're going to hit control sh shift and then we are going to duplicate this this texture again but now let's just um go hit open and then let's add this label name jpeg inside our file so double click to add it inside now let's just remove this color and then plug it into the base color and see what we have so this is what we have it's just a black and white image which is being fed into the base color so we are going to use this label name as a mask to mix two shaders together right so let's just plug our color back in once again and let's do shift d and then let's create a duplicate so as you can see we have this base color here so the base color is red and then we have a, a another color which fits in with this blue color right so we are going to try and mix these two colors together so we will tell blender and um, we'll tell the material that when wherever you see a black um let me just plug this back in so that you I can explain prop so we tell blender that wherever you see a black color just key in use this color and then wherever you see a white just use this um, shader so to mix these two shaders we're going to do shift a and then we hit on mix rgb so we hit we set for mix R, mix shader and then we plug it in the middle like this and then next we are going to use the color as the factor or ask the mask right so we have this and then we are going to put this shader here right so now the red is just affecting only the place where we have the blacks and then the rest of the shader is using this as the shader now let's just quickly so now we can separately um, change the color of our of our text to anything we want right so let's just make it white pure white like this and then let's make it it's already metallic so let's decrease the roughness a bit like this till we have something like this going on for us we can add in some bump for just just for the so just for the for the for the color sorry just for the text and then the lines going through let's add in some bump so to do that we are going to zoom in let's just select this three nodes and then we do a shift d to create a duplicate right so we are going to feed that duplicate into our normals so let's just hold this release and then let's search for bump bump node so we are going to select the height like this and then we plug the normal into the normal like this okay so let me zoom in so you can see now it's creating a certain level of bump for us let's just decrease the strength a bit and then let's decrease the distance a bit more so we have just a slight bump um, a slight bump on this texture we on this um name we created or the text we created just to create and add in some even more cool visual interest so next let's add let's add in some fingerprint and um, imperfections to our main our main texture the, the blue one so we are going to still c copy this three shaders so let me just select this and bring it down here let me select this three shaders and we'll do shift d to create a duplicate right next i'm going to plug the color into the roughness but then we are going to pass it through a color ramp so we do color ramp we set for color ramp color ramp like this We have a color ramp and then we plug the color ramp into our roughness okay so now let's select now let's select our imperfections color which is which will be included into the, the um, project file so double click to upload our imperfections 
so now as you can see all the dark the black parts is giving us 100 percent roughness and then all the white parts is giving us 100 um zero roughness hey, if all the dark parts is giving us zero, zero roughness which means more reflectiveness and then the white parts is giving us one roughness which means less reflectiveness so let's play with the colors a bit let's make this a big gray so that we can decrease um, the roughness a bit so i think this is fine and then let's just decrease this white let's make it a bit darker so that we can decrease the strength so it's just a slight roughness on on each side of our of our model right so we are done that's it for 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 the so that's it for the texturing we have this a very simple node setup so i hope it's not all that confusing so now let's go to the top and then let's select this this top part and then let's add in our silver then let's select this part and this part again then let's just add in our silver as well so let's select this part and then let's apply our silver to it so that all of them have the same materials next now next let's add in an hdri to see our scene even better so if you go from object we change it to the world view and then which we select this background and then we hit ctrl t to bring out this environment texture we hit on open then it, go, it will go back to our project file and then we just click on double click on this hgri to upload it inside our project you can grab a lot of cool hgris from hgri haven i'm going to leave a link in the description below double click and then i'll bring in my hgri so now let's hit on the viewport shading mode and then we can see our hdri lighting up our scene very well so let's continue on so next what we have to do is to just add in some let's do a shift a add in a plane and then let's scale it up right and just add it in the background so let's jump into edit mode select this edge here and we do e sorry let's so make sure we have our edge selection select only the edge and then we do e to extrude it on the z axis like this let's select this edge next and then we do ctrl p to add in the bevel right so let's add in more bevel so that we have this background let's right click and shade it smooth add in a new material so we can change the color to let's say let's change the color to this and then let's select our can hold g press g on the z axis and let's bring it up like this right so let's select our plane and then let's scale it even up a bit more so let's scale it up even more we have this we have our nice background we have our can and then we have our camera lights and then everything going on for us so now let's add in our animation and then we render our final mock-up so as you can see this is a very good way to um, present your artwork to your clients if you are a brand identity designer and you want to um, prevent present your mock-ups you can just model them inside blender for free add in some animations and then present it to give you even more selling point and more value to your clients so now i'm going to add in some animation so our glass can first let me just change my render engine to ev for a while right we're going to render the final scene inside ev let's just turn in screen screen so we are going to turn on screen space reflection and then ambient occlusion for now so this is it we have this scan here well, let me just go back here to my solid shading and then now what we have to do is to add in an null object so we do a shift a then we go to empty then we add in a cube right 
so the cube is very big obviously so let's decrease the size until it fits with our object let's just do g and then bring it up like this somewhere here okay and then we select our can then we select our can hold shift and select our cube then we'll do control p and we are going to parent it to the cube to the empty right so let's just name this as our um can animation can name it whatever you want obviously so now let's just rotate this empty so let's rotate this empty but before we do that let's just do g and then bring this empty up a bit like this okay so now we can select everything we are selecting all the can and then plus our empty now we do shift d just to create a duplicate here now we have two cans so we are going to animate both of them at the same time right so now let's select this empty and then double tap r to rotate it freely so we're going to rotate it to something like this and let's select this empty and then double tap r and then we rotate it to something like this okay so this is what we have here let's play around to find something you like love okay so next let's turn on our gizmos so we turn on our move okay then we are going to change our pivot point from global to local right so this is the global and then this is the local so from lo global to local so we are going to animate we are going to be animating our can sideways so it's going up and then down right and then the same thing applies to this one we're going up sorry we'll be going up and then down okay now let's change this view from our object view to our timeline and then let's change the end points to 80 so we are going to animate only 80 frames then let's start from zero make sure we have our empty selected then we do i then we insert location on the zero and then we go to 80 no we go to 40 right and then we bring it up like this then we do i once again and then we insert another location at 40. we insert another keyframe at 40. so now we come to 80 and then we just copy this last keyframe so we do ctrl c ctrl v and then place it at 80. so now if we play we can you can see we will have a very seamless animation it goes up and then down up and then down yeah it goes up and then down up and down so it goes up and down right so we are going to do the same animation to this empty as well so at zero let's add in our location keyframe move the timeline to 40 and then maybe we bring in our so with this i think what we have to do is just interchange it right so let me just add zero let's bring our 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 so at zero let's bring in our empty up here and then we, we add in location animation at 40 let's bring it down like this and then we add in our location and then we do control c we copy this keyframe then we come back to 80 frames and then we do control v and then we paste it so now if we play our animation 
one goes up and then one goes down one goes up and then one goes down and they are very seamless so they they will keep playing in a very seamless loop next let's add in some rotation and mixing to our cans just to add in even more interest so we're going to select this can we do i and then we add in rotation right so we've added one rotation here then we go to 80 and then we do r and then z so we are going to rotate it on the z axis um, 180 so we are going to do 360 360 right and then we add another location keyframe so let's play it oh my god this is too fast i think 360 is too fast so let's just back down then we do r on the z axis Three sixty. Let me just do three sixty again. Then let's just add in a rotation keyframe. Yeah. So we just add a three sixty look rotation like that. And then we do the same thing for this can here. So we select our can, go to frame zero. Then we do I. And then we add a rotation keyframe. Go to frame eighty. And then we do R on the Z axis, the local Z axis, and then we hit 360. Then we do I, and then we insert another keyframe. So, as you can see, they are all rotating the same. But I think that's not what we want. So let's just delete the last keyframe, and then we do R. On the z axis so we are going to rotate it anti-clockwise right so we are going to do negative 360 then we add in our rotation keyframe so now yeah so that's what we want so all of them one is rotating on the other side and then the other one is rotating on the other side so that we have something like this so let's just hit on pause and then we have we are done with our animation we can do a control s to save our animation so now we have our render engine set to ev let's just do a quick one render to see how our final render will look like so this is what we have here in ev we can still do a test render in cycles oh and then my blender crashed so let's try and do another test render in cycles just to make sure we have our lights and everything sets properly so let's just go to cycles and then let's do render image right so as you can see in cycles it's more accurate but then obviously it takes more time and it drains your computer even more so that's what we have in cycles i think we are fine we are okay we are good to go so let me change it back to ev let's make sure we have our ambient occlusion set to on screen spruce reflection on and then maybe we can add a depth of field nope we can add a motion blur just to help smoothing out our motion now it's time to render you can change our color management you can change the look to let's try high contrast to add even more contrast but then i think it's very high so maybe medium contrast is fine now you can play around with your with your shaders maybe change the background make it a little bit bluish add in some lighting here and there so we can do shift a add in this an area light let's just bring it up here just to help with the reflection so let's do s to scale it up and then let's go to our lighting properties maybe increase the strength to 100 as you can see so let's just scale it up even more then let's do shift d to add in one light here just to help with the reflections here 
so let me just change from local to global once again let me just bring it down then maybe i can position it here let me increase the light to thousand to see something is this light even affecting my scene mm, i doubt okay so let me just go ah so as you can see it's blowing up everything inside our scene so let's just decrease this to 10 even 10 is still too much then let's decrease this one to 10 yeah so we have 10 is too much for this slide let's just take it back then scale it up like this right let's just scale this one up again let's just position it to this side so this entire process is is entirely up to you you can just choose to go with just the weld just the hdri we inserted or you can add in even more colors even more lights to brighten up your scene this is entirely up to you so let's do a test render let's see i think i think this is cool it's looking more brighter so you can obviously decrease your the strength of your light to something like five and this one to five as well so let's do a quick test render once again to see what we have yeah so i think it's cool i love it i love the lighting and everything so next let's do our render what we are we finally what we've been waiting for so let's go to our our output properties and just look for let's locate where we want to output it so we go to our desktop our project file so here is where we want to output our final render so let's just hit accept to accept it how what format are we going to render it in we're we going to do a png sequence so where we render a couple of pngs and then compile them all later in another application like after effects or any other application or we are just going to straight up render a video so in this case i'm just straightforward going to render a video so i'm just going to select this video the way the way mmpeg right so make sure we have it set to rgb and then next we go to render before we do let's just do ctrl s to save our file we go to render and then we do render animation we just hit on it and then everything is going to render right before our eyes inside ev so now our render is done let's go back and then let's play it and see so i'm going to open my project files and then i'm going to play my final render so i'll play it one more time so this half so this is our final render as you can see it's rendered inside ev it's looking very good just repeat so that it keeps on playing in a loop so this is our final render rendered inside ev as you can see it's looking very good and you can use this as a mock-up just to show um your designs to your clients thank you very much for watching if you like the video please same um, help make this channel grow so please subscribe and then like my videos if you have any other tutorials you want me to tackle please leave it in the link below and if you want me to do a label design inside photoshop of how i came up with this label please just leave a comments and then i'm going to tackle that label design as well see you on the next one bye thanks it's my friend and we out